What's going on, everybody? This is Mario. I do another video. So I'm going to screen record this video because um, I just want to show you guys two videos that I saw um, that really just like sparked my attention. Um, this first, well, let me show you the first video right here. All right, so this is the first video I saw um, last night while I dropped out of college. Uh, basically, it was, it was this young girl basically talking about how college she wasn't, she wasn't happy with, with her life. She didn't know what she wanted to do with her life. She just went to college because, you know, her parents told her she should, she should go to college. And, you know, and, you know, like most people, they go to college thinking, you know, not knowing what to do with their lives. They just go because it's normal. It's, you know, it's what, you know, you were taught by your parents and your teachers, you know, that college is the best experience of your life, but it ended up not being, and being the worst experience for her life in terms of, you know, her happiness. And now she ended up dropping out. And now she's a, now she's doing YouTube. She's got a part-time job. And, you know, she said she's a lot happier now she's, since she dropped out than she was when she was in college. And just watching this video, and then she talked about, you know, how she didn't feel like an archive job was going to work out for her. And like watching this video just kind of kind of spoke to me in a way because you know, like I went to college. I mean my first year of college was kind of similar to her experience. Um but similar to her experience because you know when I went to college in New York, you know, my first year of college in New York, um, you know, I thought I was gonna be the best place of my life. I thought I was gonna go to my Godmother's church, I thought I was gonna be doing spoken word. But I ended up not doing anything stuff I won't really want to do because I was always with my I was with my cousin or my sister, and you know I was always doing what they wanted to do. You know I was always, you know I was going to you know I was always going to do things on their terms, and I, I never got a chance to like really, you know I never got a chance to do spoken open mics. You know I never got a chance to like you know having like really like meaningful friendships because I was always you know with them and. And, you know, I was always, you know, going back and forth with my cousin, and my sister, because, you know, first of all, I didn't want to be my cousin because, you know, and then, you know, because my cousin, you know, was like, eh, I don't want to be here. You know, I don't want to live in this apartment. And then, and then, so, and then my sister, my mom was my sister, my sister, you know, was always, you know, always buying food out and she would you know, sometimes take money for me just to get food. So I was just like, okay, well, you know what? I'm just like, you know what? Okay, I'm done. You know, so I just moved back here, you know, North Carolina. I really didn't want to come back to, to, to North Carolina. You know, I didn't want to come back to the area I live in because I was like, oh, I'll go back here in Richmond County. Oh, this place sucks. You know, I really, I don't you know, you know, I used to be like just like high school where I was like, yeah, just, you know, I was just around people, you know, that just didn't really want anything in life. And I really, you know, I just didn't, you know, it was gonna be boring and stuff like that. But then, you know, you know, then then I started meeting people that that felt the way I felt, you know, that was young, that was talented, that was ambitious, I really wanted something positive out of life. And and it, and it and saw life beyond just, you know, drugs and partying. And I was like, wow, you know, I, I didn't realize, you know, what I had, you know, over here. You know, these people grew up in the same area. So I maybe people live in the same area as I did, but they so like different, you know, and like, you know, God just blessing the people around me that that really had that really, you know, supported what I do and really like what I was about. So like, you know, that video really spoke to me. And this video, you know, I can definitely relate to this video more because this video, she kind of knew what she wanted to do. She, you know, was you know, she didn't. She went to college. Think I want to go, going into like media, want to get, want to be like a model and stuff like that. And you know, that was kind of like myself. You know, when I started, you know, ever since high school, I always wanted to do poetry. But you know, I always wanted to do poetry. Poetry something I was always passionate about. I don't know, it gave me a sense of freedom. I write whatever I, I was feeling. But because you know, I really know, you know, like. You know, but I didn't know that poetry in the 21st century, I don't know against poetry, Nick my as a poet in the 21st century was, you know, was hard. You know, I didn't know that it was, you know, it, it wasn't no any, I didn't know that poetry 
wasn't quote unquote a, a career per, per se, you know, like me that I know that, like I didn't know that poetry was considered a dead art form until I really, you know, got into it because you know, because I, I hear about people like Edgar Poe and you know, poems like Shakespeare, poems like uh, Walt Whitman, Robert Frost, like those guys who made a living with poetry in their like 20th, 19th, 17th century. But you know, I know that poets, you know, in the modern era, you know, was mostly starting artists. I re- I didn't realize that. So, you know, so I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna be broke, I'm gonna be starting artists, you know, let me pick something that's gonna help me, you know, keep my poetry going because I don't wanna be broke and, and doing it, but you know, doing what I love doing. So I try to figure out what ways can I enhance my poetry, you know, what what careers can I use that can kind of enhance my you know creativity so i thought about you know film i thought about uh, journalism you know all the things but then i realized that those things will be more time consuming you know it'll be out of work and and i'll just be in taking classes that you know that just that was you know that would just be training so so um so I did do the community college route, she, like she mentioned. I mean, I'm in community college right now, I'm about to finish. But she said she was going to, um, you know, go to, she wanted to go to a four-year college in Atlanta. And, you uh, know, and, but she, I mean, she wanted to go, move, live in Atlanta, but she thought that, you know, she wasn't going to be able to afford living there, so she went to college just so she could say she lived in Atlanta. But she realized that that was a good move on her part. And, and she ended up, you know, not really liking it, you know, because, you know, because she was a, around mostly older people at her community college, but then when she went to the four-year college, she was around most kids her, her age, and and she said she felt kind of, she felt like a fish out of water, so to speak, and, and, you know, I could kind of relate, I mean, even though I never went to a four-year college, I never went to a four-year university, um, I could kind of relate to that in some way, because, you know, um, because, you know, my community college, you know, my classmates are a lot of them are like, you know, you know, it's more diverse, but a lot of my classmates are in the, are parents or people in their thirties and forties and fifties, you know, some even sixties that, that I went to, you know, that I had classes with, you know, so I can understand where she's coming from with that whole, you know, four year college of kitty and then we have community college, you know, like growing up. You know, but you know, but my community college is a little bit different because I have an early college um, program in my community college. So a lot of my classmates are, you know, are still in high school. You know, like my drama class, for instance, are, you know, majority of my classmates in my drama class is majority ninth graders. You know, they just started high school and they and they happen to be in college. So, um, so you know, but. You know, I got to see both sides, but you know, when I kind of go thankful for that, because I got to see like both perspectives, you know, I got to see somebody who has lived life, somebody who has this life experience, you know, who has paid their bills and done stuff like that. But I also got to see, you know, kids who are just starting out, you know, figuring out, figuring out who they want to be and who they who they are and who, what they want to do with their lives. I kind of see both both sides of the spectrum. And like, I feel like I could be like a, I feel like I could reach both, you know, you know, through my poetry, I can, I can kind of reach both demographics because, you know, even though I'm still a college student, even though I haven't really been on my own yet, you know, I know it's like, you know, being away from home. I know it's like, I know what it feels like to kind of figure out what you want to do with your life and stuff like that. I know what it's like to, um, you know, having to, to, you know, I mean, because when you're a kid, like, you know, um, because when you're a kid, you know, you have, you know, you don't have any, like, you don't have any, like, financial, financial responsibilities yet. You, you, know, you just buy stuff you want to buy. You just buy your clothes, sneakers, video games. But, you know, me having student loans from my first college, you know, I kind of, I kind of relate to the adults because, you know, even though student loan, because I know most adults are paying student loans from way back, like, 20, 30 years ago. So, you know, it was through, my community college experience that I was able to um, um, be around people that 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 can you know be around people that 
that were really there for me, that really were there for me. You know, my, my teachers, my um, counselors, um, the, the students, like people who were like really genuinely rooting for me to do well in life. So, you know, that's that's why I, you know, that's why I feel like college, you know, it's not for everybody, but at the same time, I feel like it's still helpful if you're, you know, if, if you're, if you know what you're passionate about, but just don't know how to go about it. Like, I feel like college can be helpful, but there's a, you know, you know, but there's a way to go to college, go to college without being a super high debt. You know, you don't necessarily need to go to a Harvard, you don't necessarily go to a, you know, you know, the top tier public college, you know, just, just to say you, you went to college, you know, you can go to a community college and still get the same, you know, get some of the same, the same experience you, you get at four year college, you know, minus the party and, and then dorm, and dorm experience. But, but, um, yeah, but I'm thankful for my community college experience. I'm thankful for the teachers I have. I knew that, you know, you know, I, you know, John College was like no option, was not an option for me, mainly because my mom, you know, if, I'm, if I dropped that college, my mom would have killed me. So I knew that Jordan College was, wasn't, you know, the best option for me. But, you know, at least, at least I could say that my college experience wasn't a waste of time. It wasn't, it wasn't like I spent all this money and then end up going nowhere in my life. You know, I, I, at least my community college experience or my first year or New York college experience, you know, I felt like, you know, it felt like I wasted a waste of time, but like my community college experience, you know, definitely wasn't. So I'm thankful for I'm thankful for that. So um, you know, I know I'm normally talking a little fast right now. Um, there's just so much I want to say with these two videos. These two videos really, really just I you know they really just spoke to me as a person who who you know who is almost a college, you know, senior, who's almost a college graduate. Who had to deal with the stress of taking hard classes? Who had to, you know, deal with the loneliness of, of being a college student? Um, you know, like those two years really like spoke to me, and like I really feel like, you know, I could I could really can help a lot of like college students. You know, you know, kids who are just starting college. You know, I feel like I help a lot of those kids out because. Um, I was that person, you know, I thought going to college was just something you do at the high school. Like I realized that you didn't you don't really need college to be successful in life. Like I realized that you no, know, I mean of course like I was told as a poet you really necessarily need a college, but I didn't realize that poetry wasn't really considered a career in the twenty first century, as I was saying earlier. So I thought that I needed college to be like a a successful poet, but really I realized that, you know, I could just go to open mics. I could just, you know, um, you know, work a regular job to save money, and, you know, and then do my poetry tours. I could do that, and, and still make bread. And I go to slams, and you know, if, I, if I'm really good at my craft, the little slams, one slams, and like I can make like two hundred, like five hundred thousand dollars a slam. So, with all that being said, like I really am glad to. I really am glad that I went to college. I really am glad that you know that I was able to meet the people I met. You know, I wouldn't have met, you know, people like E-Money. I wouldn't have met people like um, OJ. Um, I wouldn't have met, you know, um, you know, these these guys that I consider like my friends. Like, you know, like these guys are not, you know, they just, you know, oh, these guys, ah, you know, trying to get my thoughts together. These guys aren't, you know, just people I went to class with. These guys are considered like my friends. Like these guys, were rooting for me the whole time. These you were know, rooting for me. These guys were, you know, praying for me. These guys were supporting what I did. These guys understood where I was coming from. You know, somebody who was young and and want to do something meaningful with their life, like so so meaningful in life. And I just you know be out here partying and just being out there, you know, out there, you know, living, you know, living any kind of way. Like I just want to do something like positive, I want to do something meaningful in my life, and like and these guys were were behind me on that. Like I really think for those people that I met, you know, Evan, Jacob, OJ, um, you know, 
all those guys. Like, I really thank for all of them because it was for them. Like, I probably was still, you know, I probably still felt like I was in high school again. And high school wasn't, you know, you know, it wasn't the best time of my life. You know, like high school, you know, I was just around people that I had to be around with, you know. Most of the kids in my high school partied and drank and smoked and stuff like that. And like, I knew that that wasn't for me. So I'm glad I get to be on people that I can relate to and people that were really, and that I could really just, you know, again, I could be a mentor, I, just, I could be a, a friend to them and also a mentor to them because a lot of them were younger than I was. And a lot of kids that I were friends with my community college were 17, 18, 19 year olds, you know, who were just starting college, whereas me, you know, I was ready, my, I was like, I was ready in college, you know, I was 19, 20, 21 now, you know, like I already had my college experience, you know, and my, my friends, you know, were still in high school. So it's like a blessing that I get to see both sides. You know, then, you know, I had also, a, I also had a Cancer Crusade for Christ who also supported me. I had met people like over there, like, um, Kristen um, Stiltonville, who is an amazing, amazing person. You know, she came, you know, she came all the way up here, all the way from Michigan to North Carolina. And she talked about her story of, you know, being a teenager and just following God. But she was dealing with so much, like, turmoil in her life as a teen. And, like, you know, she had to, like, be the big sister. And, and, and she had to be, like, the mom, basically, because her parents were, like, going through, you know, we're going through a huge fight and I was just like so like I was like oh my god like you know like people like that like I'm like people like that is the people that I want to be around with because like you know like when I you know when I was in high school I was a born again Christian I didn't you know you know I was listening to, you know people like to pray and, you know and I was you know reading the bible like I was like focused you know I you know I wasn't dating anybody I wasn't you know looking for any girls you know, I was like focused and like, and, and, but like, you know, nobody, everybody thought it was weird. Everybody looked at me crazy. You know, everybody was like, you don't smoke weed. You know, God created weed now. You know, you ain't going to hit that. You know, like, everybody looked at me weird and stuff like that. So I was like so happy that I get to see somebody who, you know, who, you know, who was a Christian, who am I, who lived, who was a Christian, you know, as a teenager. I mean, and then, and then, you know, somebody who's, you know, following God, you know, as a young teen and but but had but didn't grow up in that in a typical Christian household. Like she grew up, you know, in a typical Christian household, you know, meaning that, you know, because when most people, you know, most people who grew up, you know, most kids who grew up in a Christian home, you know, most kids were like Christian, you know, they grew up in a two parent household, you know, in the suburbs, you know, you know, it's normal, you know normal parents get along stuff like that but she didn't have that experience you know she had a you know a very difficult experience by the team and then with myself you know you know i never you know I never went to domestic violence you know because i go to see my mom you know but me being a christian me growing up in the hood and me you know see, being around kids who were teen teen parents um you know were were um you know you know, you know, were potheads and you know stuff like that. Like I grew up in like a normal Christian family, so like I could, I definitely relate to Christian right there. So, you know, I know I kind of ramble a bit in this video, but I always want to say that college is definitely a great experience for me. I'm glad that I'm about to come around and finish in college in May. But you know, even though, but even though I had a great experience in college, I understand that. I understand why people drop out. I understand that why, you know, people say college is not for them. I, I can understand that completely. So that's why if you are going to college and you do, if you, if you are going to college, you know, if you, if you, you know, have a, if you have a career path where you like you need college, you know, in order to, in order to be successful, you know, there are smart ways to go to go about it. You know, like community college, for example. Um, you know, you know, go to in state. You know, you don't don't go out of state if you're, you know, if you plan on going to a four year college after high school. Um, try to stay away from student loans. You know, so look at your tuition rate. 
really pay attention to your tuition rate, you know, whatever college you want to go to. So, like, just practical tips to help you with your college experience. And if you're somebody who just don't know what you're going to do with your life, um, you know, like, if you're someone who just don't really know what you want, what, you want, what you want to do with your life, you know, you just, like, out here figuring stuff out. You know, networking is a great, it's great, you know, um, joining clubs and, um, you know, again, community college, you know, again, community college can help you find your career path, um, you know, and without being in super high debt. A lot of parents, you know, underestimate community college because they feel like, um, you know, it's like, it's like high school where it's like the opposite. You know, community college, you know, you actually feel like an adult, but at the same time, you feel protected because you're not away from home. You know, it's kind of weird because when you're in a four-year college, you're mostly around, you know, 18 to 22 year olds. Whereas when you're at community college, you're around like people in their 30s or 40s, you know, you know, 50s, 60s, you know, you're around parents and grandparents, you know, who are students and just, you know, try to get their life back together. So anyway, with that being said, this is Matt Walker signing off.